That was a great welcome. Thanks, Tatiana. I know uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna show some of the hellos from folks here. We've already got it. Beautiful music. Hello, everyone. It's great to see you this morning. I'm Reverend Elizabeth Mora, and I am the senior minister here at Unity Northwest Church, and I'm so grateful to have you joining us. Grateful. That'll be a word we'll probably say Oh, you know, a couple of dozen times if, you know, this were a drinking game, you'd take a shot or a piece of chocolate whenever you hear me see gratitude, thankful, grateful, anything like that. I challenge you. There's the challenge for today. How many times do I say grateful, thankful, gratitude? Starting now. All right. Welcome. Whether you are watching right now, live on Sunday, November 22nd or you're watching this during the week or sometime down the future, thank you for being here with us, whatever time it is in your world, whatever day it is in your world. You found your way to Unity Northwest Church on the Sunday before Thanksgiving, and we have a wonderful service planned for you. We're so grateful that you're here this morning, grateful that you kept your appointment with your spiritual growth. That's what it's really about. So everyone is welcome here in the Unity Church. We are an inclusive, open, welcoming church. Wherever you are on that path of yours, we're glad that you're here. And you are the church. I like to remind us each week that it's not about the minister looking into the camera. It's not about a building. It's about these teachings and it's about you. You are what make it church. Thank you for doing that with your presence. And if this is your first time with us, we have a special welcome. Thank you. If you are new, go ahead and pop your name down in the comments or say hi in the comments if you're comfortable doing that. We'd love to give you some shout outs from those who are watching. And if you'd like more information, and even if you aren't new, if you've been around and you've got some questions or anything, email us at the church email address at the top of the screen there, unitynorthwest at yahoo.com. We'd be happy to send you a welcome packet on um, electronically. We'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. We're here to serve you. And thank you for being here. And as we go along throughout the service here, you already know that if you've been coming for a while. And if you're new here, go ahead and again, say hi over in the comments section. It lets us know that you're here. It lets me put a face to the green dot that I'm looking at. Feel free over the next few minutes to go ahead and say hi, um, hit like, whatever is your flavor, go ahead so that we can welcome you. And now I would like to welcome uh, dear friend of the, I want to say of the broadcast, friend of the broadcast, friend of the show, help me welcome Mr. Chris Selvick. Who's going Good morning, to everyone. Assistant. Hi, Chris. Hi. So Chris is going to join us in the opening prayer and the invocation and the daily word. If you want to kind of get settled into that prayer space, I'm going to turn it over to Chris. So um, as chaplains, we learn the first thing we do when we pray is to take a deep breath. So everyone take a deep breath and join me as uh, we say the words of Charles Fillmore's invocation. Which, and as, um, as, yeah, as, as soon as the minister gets them up on the screen here. <laughs> well, you know, at this point, I should probably have it memorized, but, you know, for everyone else. There you go. Give me just there a go. second here. You see the uh, the magic behind here, yeah. and I'm going to start that up and put that. And you know what, Chris? Yeah. I'm just I'm so excited to see you on screen. That uh, boy, my eyes are really going, gang. Um, that I forgot to do the opening prayer. <laughs> <laughs> so give me a second to back up here, and I'm going to go ahead and open us in prayer. So as. Uh, I am going to find a way to make myself come big on this screen. There we go. Hello again, everybody. <laughs> and so once, so the glasses go on and the screen comes up. There we go. And we settle in for this time of opening prayer. 
there we go. We are now present. And as Chris reminded us, a nice deep breath, wherever you are. The beginning of your prayer, a connection with the divine. And you join together today with so many people, all those online today and those watching in the future. This is now a joint prayer beyond time, beyond space. We hold the world in our hearts this morning. We hold every soul in our heart this morning knowing the best is possible for all of us because the best is different in every moment. Right now is the best moment of my life. I am here and present. I'm joined with spiritual people on a spiritual journey. I am uplifted by Tatiana's music. I'm touched by Chris's smile and his energy. I'm excited for what the message will be today. In all these ways, in these small but powerful ways, I can stop and realize this is the best moment of my life. I made it here. Through all the challenges and struggles, I made it here. I greet this day. I greet this service with anticipation, with joy, with excitement, with openness, and with gentleness, so that whatever needs to come my way and pierce into my heart does so with ease. And so it is. Amen. All right. Am I on? And Chris is on. Thank you, Chris. All right, excellent. So let's let's now do the invocation. Everyone take a deep breath. Close your eyes and, and picture yourself just in the, the sanctuary together, all saying the words of the invocation. I am now in the presence of pure being and immersed in the Holy Spirit of life, love, and wisdom. I acknowledge In divine wisdom, now erase my human limitations, and from your pure substance of love, bring my world according to your perfect law. Chris, Chris, my apologies. We're still getting used to having um, so many people online with us. I didn't have the speaker in front of the microphone. Let's do it one more time with gusto. All right, with gusto. All right. I am now in the presence of pure being and immersed in the Holy Spirit of life, love, and wisdom. I acknowledge your presence and your power, O blessed spirit, in your divine wisdom. Now erase my human limitations and from your pure substance of love, bring into manifestation my world according to your perfect law. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> All right, now for the daily word. Uh, the, the daily word for today is forgive. In the peace of prayer, I release all unforgiveness. Now, if I hold on to feelings of hurt, betrayal, or anger in response to another person's words or actions, I block the flow of divine love and peace in my life. Well, it's only on guilt, shame, or embarrassment that may arise when I have hurt another person also keeps me from experiencing divine love and peace. Forgiveness removes all barriers, all obstacles, anything that may be disrupting in my experience of divine presence. In order to forgive myself or another person, I need to just, I need to not justify, or I need not justify or approve behavior that is unwelcome. I need only to become willing to forgive. And in the peace of prayer, I release all unforgiveness. I feel the healing of power, or I feel the healing power of divine love as it dissolves all barriers, all illusion of separation. I forgive and I am healed. And the Bible verse is, and forgive us our debts. We also have forgiven our debtors. And that's Matthew 6, 12. Thank you so much, Chris. Sure. 
It's wonderful having you on with us as always. And tell us a little bit about yourself uh, since we didn't do it at the top. Where do you fit in at the church, my dear? Well, I've, uh, I've been with the church uh, since 2006 and have uh, kind of dabbled in everything with exception to maybe the board, but uh, currently I am a chaplain uh, and uh, helping you out here. It's great. Your, your virtual platform assistant. This is my virtual platform assistant. Excellent. And prayer chaplain. So he's serving double duty. Thanks, Chris. We'll hear sure. from you a little bit later. And now let's say hello to those who are online with us. We asked you to check in. So we've got Carolyn, we've got Tim. Good morning to you, Evelyn. One of our Jeanettes, we like Jeanettes and Cindy's at this church. Hi, Bobby and Mark, great to have you with us and thanks for always joining fellowship. Cindy needs the service today. Well, we are here for you today, Cindy, absolutely. Hi, Anita, Tanya to the girls and the family. Here's our other Jeanette. Kat, welcome. Hope you're feeling even better and better. Nancy Leahy Jacklow, our wonderful Unity teacher who helps us out. And Tim's brother Ron is here. We've got the Jordan brothers. Nice to see you, Nancy. Good morning, Patricia. And um, we've got folks also letting Tatiana know how wonderful she is, that opening music. It's so great. And to hear her talk for a few minutes, wasn't that great? So we're bringing on more folks as we can here. Love to Tatiana. Love to Tatiana. Good morning to everyone from Anne, from the trailers, from Karen. She's grateful to be here today. If you missed it when we started, count how many times I say grateful, thankful, thanksgiving, anything like that. So there was a bunch right there. So, and hi, Chris, and hi to the Bostons. Wonderful to have you all with us here this morning. So let's go ahead and into a time of meditation. Take that sacred time as we go into meditation. And I'm going to bring Tatiana in with me here, and she's going to play, we think, for the first time since we've been doing this, a little background music, if I can get it at the right volume. So go ahead, Tatiana, let's see what happens. And you can let me know in the chat box. Music is enough, but not too loud. I might head down and at least settle in. Your sacred time, meditation. Music helps us into this space, the love and the heart that our dear Tatiana puts in. It's popping in to let us know the music is good. Just right. Deep into my soul, deep into my soul. <sighs> As I let go and release any thoughts of the day. into this space. And even as we work on the sound here, we use that as part of our practice. There we go. Down so I can barely hear it. And perhaps that means that it's just right now. 
for those of us that it's working fine, you can just continue in this space. We bring everything into meditation with us. The challenges, the beauty, and accept it all right as it is in this moment. Everything <laughs> is for meditation. This meditation that we do here in unity is one of presence and awareness to fully embrace the moment that we are in. That is what I do now. I embrace everything in my life. I embrace whatever challenges happened this week. I may not love them. But I can embrace them and bring love to them. I can be grateful that whatever it was in this holy moment, all is well. Take a moment to really feel that, not just as words that might not be true. In this holy moment, sitting in a chair on a couch, listening to their computer, their phone, their eyes gently closed, breathing, all is well. Just for this moment, I don't get ahead to think about what next. I'm not living in tomorrow. All I need to do is sit and be in that knowing, in the silence. I am This is the awareness of God. I have within me this power to tune into the divine, to be the light of essence, beyond the noise, beyond all the sights and the doing, peaceful perfection. And as we move forward, we take this out into the world with us, each of us. We find these moments throughout the day, and then we create them when we need them most. This practice, this practice of knowing and letting go of what isn't ours, this practice to know the truth, that this the center of all. God, for this we are so grateful. And so it is. Amen. Happy. Thank yous, giving. Wait, what did she just say? I said, happy, thank yous, giving. Of course, that's not quite right. Happy thank yous, giving is a greeting that comes from Arturo's dad, Jose Mora, 
he's no longer with us. And I never got to meet Jose, but I've certainly got to meet him through all the funny things that Arturo tells me about his dad. He used to do things like this with words all the time. He would be silly and he would goof things up on purpose to make his kids laugh. He was a great dad, according to Arturo. And so I share with you today, happy thank yous giving. Maybe it's something that you'll take on in your lexicon of gratitude words. Happy thank yous giving. And this is surely a Thanksgiving like no other. How can I not go there, right? This is a different Thanksgiving than most of us have ever had and will probably ever have again. And there's an opportunity to bring a combination of the traditions that have worked and that you treasure and to create something new. And really that's how life always is. This balancing of continuing forward and honoring our rituals and traditions. And then not being stuck in that, but also being open to what could be birthed right now. Take a moment to think about, hold on a second, the cat. No, she's scratching, got to get her claws nipped. Take a moment to think about what it is that you love about Thanksgiving that you can make happen. Certainly the attitude that comes with this holiday. Maybe it's phone calls that you call the relatives that you can't see anyway and you say hi to them and you have a conversation. Maybe it is watching the parade. So what are those things that you love about Thanksgiving? And if you will, go ahead and put a few of them there in the chat box. What do we love about this holiday? And what are some of the things that you might not be able to have this year? And I would guess that for most of us, the number one thing is that we aren't going to be meeting with our families like we normally would. So that's where the opportunity comes in. What do we want to create this Thanksgiving? And how can we be really gentle with ourselves in the disappointment for the things that we won't have? I'm really aware of that phenomenon right now. We're aware and grieving what we've lost. We're grieving over 250,000 lives that are lost. We're grieving that our country is shutting down again for COVID on some level. We're grieving that we're not gonna be sitting around a table with a 22 pound turkey, but maybe this year a 10 pound turkey for two or three of us. And we realize that we have an opportunity here at Unity Northwest to do Thanksgiving a little bit different. So we are continuing on with our tradition of the Thanksgiving Eve service this Wednesday. Now I'm guessing that most of you aren't gonna be going out somewhere, so we expect to see all of you. Now, it'll be on Zoom, and then if you don't wanna be on Zoom to be seen or to speak your gratitude on the Thanksgiving Eve service, you can just watch on Facebook. You can put things in the comment, but for those of you who know this service and you've been part of it, you can join again online. You might get yourself a nice little candle to set up your space. So we're continuing the ritual. That tradition continues on. And I see that we've got some folks letting us know what's what's up for them this season. So we won't be seeing the family and we don't get to be in the church service uh, tonight. Hey, thanks, Anne. Charlie Brown Christmas, that's a big one for us. We didn't get our big family, but a Zoom call. Thanksgiving parade while smelling the turkey. Love getting together and truly will miss that. Me too, Karen. And I get it that we need to do that. And next year will be, I think, amazing. And there's deeper one-on-one -on -one time for our Nucleus family at the thank yous giving table. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Elaine. That's great. There's a deeper time with the family that you live with. Of course, that may be the worst thing I just said to you, but hopefully that's a good thing, that there's a deeper time. So maybe there is something that you're going to create 
this holiday season. And that's what we've done here at Unity Northwest. We're adding to the Thanksgiving by having a Thanksgiving Day prayer service. I don't know if it's ever been done. I've never done one in any of my churches. So I hope you can join us for prayer, 1030 a.m., 10 to 1030, again on Zoom. And if you prefer, you can join us on Facebook. The links to all of this are up above. We'll tell you about that later, but they are in the description. Click see more and you can have all of the links. They're the same Wednesday night to Thursday. So we're going to create a prayer time together. And again, other than putting the turkey in the oven, I'm guessing that there's not a lot happening for you on that day. So I hope that you can create a new tradition of a time of grateful prayer on Thanksgiving. What a concept to sit together with each other on that day. Less running around, less rushing. Maybe those are some of the benefits that you're starting to see. I know that I am as much as I'm disappointed about what I'm not having. Because thankfulness is a spiritual barometer, an evidence of the condition of your spiritual life and your value system. It's a time for us at this time of year to take stock of that, to say, am I being as grateful as I can? What is motivating that? What are the things that I recognize? Take a look at your spiritual barometer. Now, no guilt, no shame. I always say that. No guilt, no shame when taking a look at yourself and what's working and what you'd like to add to your practice. So never, oh, I wasn't doing it right before, but oh, I see a new possibility. You know what? I'm going to get back on that thankfulness practice, whatever that is. No guilt, no shame. Simply a chance to take a look at what I'm doing with my spiritual life. As Myrtle Fillmore said, there is nothing like appreciation, love, praise, and thanksgiving to increase your good. Who isn't in for that? Who isn't in for increasing your good? And Myrtle has given us, just as all the sages have, the recipe for it. An attitude of gratitude in our heart for those things that we can be grateful for. And as we expand that, as we expand being grateful for things that are easy to be grateful, we may even grow into a space where we can be grateful for the hard things. Time tends to help with that, doesn't it? As we go along, as you look back, it's a little bit easier. Myrtle did this wonderful thing in her book, How to Let God Help You. <clears throat> she gave us inspiration about different topics. Oops. She shared with us the importance of Thanksgiving and Christmas and, hey, sorry, Tatiana, we're experimenting now. Here we go. <laughs> I will remove her. Sometimes I click on the wrong screen and then I get myself out of the PowerPoint and then I just bring myself back in and there we go. And oh, there we go. Why can my eyes not see? And there we go. Oh, I love it when I get it all back up and working again. There we go. So here is a little clip from our dear Myrtle. There's a whole chapter in her book about Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving and gratitude are qualities of the soul too little understood and exercised. Oops. Heaven and earth, listen and respond to the soul that is quickened into praise and thanksgiving. Praise is gratitude and action. Try it in your home. She's giving us this advice on how to be in our homes at a time when we are nothing but at home. Perhaps Arturo and I can start with morning gratitude. We don't do that. I just had that idea as I thought about it. I picture Myrtle and her family that looked like this. Now Myrtle is the one on the far right with kind of her head tip to the side there. And then Charles is on the opposite side. So there's the family. And I can just picture them sharing gratitudes every morning. And this is what Myrtle looked like in both her younger and her later years. 
So here is this delightful young woman raising a young family and also a wise old grandmother saying to us, have gratitude in your home. Who talks about how to make a home today? Organizing shows do. I know all about organizing my home. And Myrtle's telling us in How to Let God Help You how to create the heart of your home. What a time for us as we're all home, much more, to possibly create something new and really take the time to create a heart for our home. If you've never practiced a daily practice of this in your home, you've left unused one of the most potent factors available to you for bringing out the ideal conditions in your home. We know this is the power of the creative process in our life. We hold in mind, we follow our God urgings, and we create what it is that we are desiring, that we are dreaming about. And most importantly, what Myrtle is talking about here is that inner world. Because I know my mind just went to, well, yeah, you know, we do create, but I don't always create exactly what I was hoping I would recreate. And that comes from an external focus. I may not always create the physical conditions exactly as I thought. What Myrtle is always talking about is a deeper understanding. I want to create a heart in my home. And the most powerful way I can do that, one of the most powerful ways I can do that, is by gratitude. Emily Cady also had some words for us. She didn't have a family that she was talking about here, but praise and thanksgiving have within them the quickening spiritual power that produces growth and increase. A quickening power. There is a quickening power in what we do. We might call that just a little bit of magic. There's something about this act that seems to carry the human mind far beyond the region of doubt into a clear atmosphere of faith and trust that where all things are possible. It takes us all the way out into that land, into that realm, the spiritual realm. Gratitude puts us in the spiritual realm. It's hard to be grateful and depressed at the same time. It's hard to be full of gratitude and hopeless. Once we start realizing how much there is that we're blessed by, it puts us in that spiritual realm. And that is where we want to create from. We could start our prayers with thank you, thank you, thank you. Not even knowing exactly what we're being grateful for because it's unlimited. Yes, there are challenges, absolutely. And you might say, I, I can't be grateful for that. Okay, that's fine. Set that one aside for now. What else? What else might there be? And this quickening spirit we see in the story of the loaves and the fishes from Mark 6, 41. And Jesus took the five loaves and the two fishes and looking up toward the heaven, he blessed the food and broke the loaves and he kept giving them to the disciples to set before them. And he divided up the two fish among them all and everyone was satisfied. Everyone was satisfied. There is a quickening power in what Jesus did, giving thanks before giving thanks for the little that they had in appearance. So what can we do to bless our loaves and fishes that sometimes seem like not enough? Another message in this story is about the fact that we have so much more than we truly realize. How this miracle occurred some say it could be that so many people then carried food with them, kind of like my friends that always have a power bar in their purse, that they always had some sort of snack as they were walking around. They were out. They were used to having to find food. 
They may or may not have been planning to stay all day. Some may not have needed to eat. We don't really know the circumstances of the crowd that gathered, the 5,000, the 10,000 that gathered. Because remember, they were only counting the men. <laughs> so this huge crowd fed by a little bit, it gives us a very powerful image. So beyond what happened in the physical, Jesus was a grateful for the little that he had. He was probably grateful for this crowd of people who came to see him. And not knowing is where faith comes in. I don't know how this works. On a very small scale, sometimes you throw a party and you think, did I make enough food? And the answer is always yes. But did I make enough food? And then by the time everyone comes, the table is so overflowing, you have too much. And you say, why did I make so much food? That's a modern day example of the loaves and the fishes. And again, in our lives, how there is always so much more than we recognize. A modern day way to look at that is when you're asked if your cup is half full or half empty, be thankful that you have a cup. Look beyond the initial question into something deeper here. Of course, the Typical way that we say this, and we'll do this on Wednesday night, nothing wrong with this. What are you grateful for? I happen to see that Teddy is grateful. She's in for it all. It's hard to be grateful and depressed at the same time. So what are you grateful for is the first question. And you might put a few things over in the chat box if you like. What are you grateful for? Oh, it's good to just get yourself out of any thought of lack. And here's another question. What are you grateful from? A totally different perspective. Moving out of what have I gotten? From that thought, it's easy to be, what am I grateful for? I'm grateful for the things that I see. Yes, the people in my life. And what am I grateful from? I'm grateful from a sense of abundance, from a sense of enough, to move from the story the world tells me of not enough to enough. If we got that one thing, how different would life be? There is enough. The loaves and the fishes tell me there is enough. In this moment, as you sit here, life is enough. You're breathing, you're sitting. Hopefully you have food in your stomach. It may not be great, it may not be perfect, but it got you here. Here you are, bit by little bit. I am grateful from the realization of how blessed I am. And I have a word that I've made up for that. Some of you may recall that I have this goal of somehow making it into the Oxford English Dictionary. And this is one of my words. Gratavancitude. Say it with me. Gratavancitude. Gratavancitude. What is gratavancitude? An attitude of gratitude in advance an attitude of gratitude in advance before you see the thing, the thank you at the beginning. It's a powerful practice. Wake up first thing in the day. Imagine being grateful for what comes. I may not like every part of it. Some will be better than the rest. But what a difference if I start out thinking I'm going to be grateful. How will I see things differently? The challenge that comes along, maybe it won't be so challenging. Because somewhere, even if you think you're fooling yourself, you set the intention, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. Here are some of the things that folks are grateful for. <laughs> Take out turkey. Absolutely. I think the restaurants are going to be doing a mighty business of just order it out and bring it in. Many of us right now 
are in a good place financially. Some of us aren't, and my heart goes out to us. And there are a lot of us that are saving a lot of money right now and choosing to do things like ordering out to support the restaurants or making extra donations where we might not have before, whatever it is. So a small gathering and um, loving the idea of candle lighting on Thanksgiving. It's great to be slowing down. That is one of the main things that most of us are, many of us are saying, good to slow down. We're gonna have a Zoom call with family. Where are we getting the takeout turkey? Playing games, oh, virtually. I gotta figure out how to do that. Let us know what, where you do that, how you do that, Elaine. Let us know what sites you're using. Um, Friendship Hall rocks. Oh, candid camera, <laughs> vintage pictures, daily walks with your family, admire the Christmas lights. They are out early this year, folks. Speak your admiration of the homeowner it is inside. What a sweet thing to do. Send a blessing to the family inside. Oh, I love that. Inhaling good fresh air. Such beautiful, simple things. Thank you. Teddy's in for all of it. It's the simpler things I appreciate. Yeah, so many of us looking for opportunities to help others, which Jeanette does. Grateful for a husband, a home, a kitty, and that we're both working from home. Our family, silence and calm, health. Look at this. Nobody's mentioning cars. Nobody's mentioning jewelry. We're all mentioning all these beautiful things and perhaps past the meatballs and spaghetti. Perhaps this is a year, the year maybe, where we really are grateful for the things that we say matter. And remember, it's not happy people who are thankful. It goes the other way. It's by being thankful that brings happiness and joy. Martha Smock has the final words for us here today. She was a beloved unity minister. I believe she was in charge of Silent Unity for a long time. She has wonderful books. And Martha says, don't wait for the gratitude until it's perfect. It'll never be. Give thanks where you are in the present set of circumstances, in the conditions you're in. Thanks for life and for the opportunities to, lo to learn and to grow. And I see that in all of you. I see it in the comments. I see it in the way you live your lives. I invite you to continue that and create these wonderful new traditions and let us know what they are and what it's like. I know we're going to make a real concerted effort to watch that parade this year. Usually we're trying to get all the food ready to head out the door. Well, we're not going anywhere this year. I'm gonna really sit and enjoy the parade. We got to see it twice when we lived in Jersey and, and, and that just brings back such great memories. So all the new things that you're doing and, and maybe you tell your family and they roll their eyes a little, okay, we're gonna do something a little different this year. You know, I want us to all sit around and watch the parade together, whatever it is. Attitude of gratitude in advance. With Gret Evansitude, I welcome you to the Wednesday night service. I welcome you to Thursday morning prayer. I welcome you into a new type of Thanksgiving. And please share on our Facebook page on Thanksgiving Day what's going on and what you're doing. Maybe that's a new tradition. We post a little something on the Unity Northwest page about how grateful we are and what we're doing with our families. And then we're all connected, even though we're not together in person. Happy Thanksgiving to you. Happy Thanksgiving to your family. Be well. Be joyful. Make it yours. So you're standing on the side of a mountain, scared to go up or down. Your knees are shaking. And your heart is pounding Too late to turn back now Don't give up Keep on climbing Keep believing in your dream You've got the faith And you'll be fine And 
you got everything you need. Cause no matter what you want to do, or who you want to be, reach down deep inside yourself, you'll find everything you need. You don't know the words, but sing along anyway. If there's someone whose heart is breaking and they reach out for your love, just take their hand and don't you worry, you'll always have enough. Cause no matter what you want to do or who you want to be, Reach down deep inside yourself, you'll find everything you need. You can find compassion to try falling tears. You can find the courage to face your darkest fear. You can be the president or be a superstar. It don't matter where you're from, who or what you are. Cause no matter you want to do or who you want to be reach down deep inside yourself you'll find everything you need everything you need thank you richard mcdesey for that great song that we have everything we need including a church that we love. Take a moment now, gratitude for Unity Northwest Church. I know y'all have it, and this is the time when we express it through our financial contributions to your spiritual practice. I like to remind us all that this is an investment in you. So thank you for as the basket passes here in front of you to electronically put something in the basket here. If you look up at the top of this uh, the description of our broadcast here today, there are a whole bunch of links. And one of those links, I think it's the first one, is to donate. So if you've never done it before, try it today. You can try it with $5 if that's all you do. That is great. Be in this attitude of gratitude in advance. Take a moment to push the little donate button. And all you need to do is put in the simplest of information that you do to pay for anything online, your name, your credit card number. If you've got a PayPal account, you can link to that and invest in yourself this Thanksgiving to say, this is part of my life and I support it and invest it, invest in it. And in doing that, you are in an attitude of gratitude in the spiritual realm already. Giving puts us into that spiritual realm. And if you don't do online donations, that's okay. We have an option for you as well. All you need to do is write a check, put it into the mail. Here's the information on that. You can look up our address later on if it's too fast right now. Pop it into an envelope and put it in the mail. And for those of you who are longtime comers and deeply affected here by the church, we ask that you consider making your donation automatic so that we don't forget it in these crazy changing times that I'm not at church and so I don't see a basket out of sight, out of mind. So if you make it an automatic donation like I have, like many of our tithers have, then you never need to forget your gratitude is automatic and your investment in your spiritual future is automatic. So thank you for being in a space of giving this Thanksgiving. Let's now say our blessing to this offering in all the ways that you give and whatever has sparked you today, divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And so it is. 
And with that, my dear friend, Chris, we're bringing you back on here. It's good to have you back with us. Double checking that I'm hearing you. I muted you. And there now you we go. have Chris. Flattery medium. Connected yeah. to. Natural. My speaker timed out. There we go. Hi, Chris. Hello. Welcome back. Hello. And good message he is today. Thank you. Thank you. And we are going to have Chris share with us what's going on in the church world. All right. The upcoming events. Mark your calendars. Oops. The minister is behind the scenes. There you go. There we go. So uh, Wednesday, of course, you know, uh, Reverend Elizabeth mentioned that we've got the uh, Thanksgiving Eve service. Join us at 7 p.m. Uh, and that's going to be on Zoom and or Facebook, depending on how you'd like to participate with that. And then join us for Thanksgiving Day service from 10 to 10.30 a.m. on Zoom. And then uh, on Monday, December 7th, we'll have the holiday self-care. Um, you know, the, the, the holidays can be uh, a great time. Um, they can also be a very stressful time for many of us. And um, of course, this year being the year of uncertainty, you know, it, who knows what kind of time it could be for you. So join us on Monday, the seventh, uh, to to learn how we can take care of ourselves and, and make it through this, uh, in, in make it through the holidays with joy and happiness. Reverend L Elizabeth will lead a gentle, caring time of music, inspiration, inspirational readings, laughter, and connection. So join us on Monday, the seventh. All right, and Sunday school is back. It'll be every two weeks. Um, so zoom on over to Sunday school. Uh, we're back in meeting every other week, 10 a.m. Sunday. Uh, our next meeting will be on 11 on the 29th of Oct or November, and the topic is gratitude. So mark your calendars for the uh, 13th of December and the 27th of December, and uh, please write Miss Carolyn for the Zoom link. Uh, and her email, I guess, is here, but we'll we'll get that out to you as well. Um, don't miss out on anything going on. Oh, let's go. To Sorry, the... I went too fast. That's all right. Uh, so, you know, we may not be gathering in person, but Christmas is still happening. So to celebrate the season together, we invite you to a drive through Christmas party. You know, drop by the church on Saturday, December 5th, anytime between 11 and noon. Say hi, pick up your holiday gift packet, and enjoy Reverend Elizabeth's special homemade hot chocolate. Uh, so we've got everything packaged up for you for the holiday. You can stay staying distance and mask to your car. car. You can have your candle for Christmas Eve, stone for the new year, the stationery for your burning bowl, and a surprise gift from the church as well. Um, so uh, as our only in-person event for the holidays, we hope that you'll bless us with your presence so that we can see you and keep your hearts connected. So mark your calendars. That is the 5th at 11 a.m. And then don't miss out on, on anything that's going on in the church. Uh, text the word CONNECT to 847-908-5100, and you'll get a message once or twice a week just letting you know, keeping you up to date, and reminding you of what's going on. So that's 847-908-5100. And, of course, uh, you know, if you find, especially this Friday, um, that your fidget fridge is full of leftovers. You are obviously in abundance and there are many out there who aren't this year. So uh, take advantage of the CARES Act and, and let's give uh, to those in need. And other reminders, uh, read the e weekly e-blast. You get an email. Um, all the videos are on YouTube. Feel free to donate anytime and really stay safe, wear your masks and um, We'll get through this and pray. And then. Uh, Do you want me to pop in? Yeah, I'm not sure. I, 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 that looks, just looks like a link to everything that we've been talking about. That's exactly right. Just in case people aren't sure, there is a button that says see more. A lot of times people miss. I didn't see it up there because we can only show a few lines at once. Everything is up there, like 10 or 15 lines. All right. And we'll uh, see you next week, I guess, the Unity Church of Ames. 
You got it. We won't right. be here. So 1030, a little bit earlier. And again, the link is up above. There you go. And I keep on wanting to ask who's Seymour, by the way. Who's Seymour? Well, you keep on saying Seymour. I'm like, who's Seymour? Who's Seymour. <laughs> Seymour. There you go. Right. All right. And then, uh, of course, after the service on Zoom, there's a link somewhere on the page that you're looking at. Uh, join us for fellowship uh, there. And uh, and have a great week. Have a great, oh, Of course, the chaplains will be there in fellowship as well. Yes. For Thank prayer. You. Thank you, Chris. And please remember everybody how wonderful you are. That's what I always want you to take away with you, that you're fabulous, you're wonderful, you're stupendous. You're exactly who you need to be. We're so grateful that you're with us. And I'm going to bring Tatiana on one last time here instead of surprising her. Hey, Tatiana, there you go. So here we have um, all three of us. What a day it's been. If there's a way to make us equal. I did this <laughs> There we, there we go. go. There you are. So here's your crew from today. Thank you, Tatiana, for the music. You saw all the gratitude. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Chris, sure, for sure. your part. And hey, as we go out today, maybe Tatiana can play us a little outgoing music. Does that sound good? All right. Thank you, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. See you over on Fellowship. Tatiana, take it away. Mm -hmm. Uh oh, I unmuted her. I will unmute her right now. Thank you.